I'm gonna switch this back over to science and technology. All right, we'll get the NSF cast up. Look at that thing. As you can clearly tell, are moving up with the booster. Those are kind of in a sort of on rails or in tubes on the transport mount. Tubes! Those ensure that the booster stays stable as it moves out of the transport mount. Now this thing is so big and this equipment is so, you know, coarse adjustment. You can't have super, super fine adjustment with this. You don't want to risk hitting your transport mount. So those stabilizer arms guide the booster up and out of the transport mount just to avoid the off chance that, you know, it's slightly misaligned and you don't want it to damage your transport mount or your booster, especially your booster. Um, so those are kind of helping guide it right out of the transport mount. They're going to pause. It looks like they've actually paused lift right now. Mm -hmm. Those arms are going Big. to detach. You'll see some pins pull out from there. They're actually pins driven into the booster. It's a pilot dowel, guys. Um, there's two pilot dowels uh, at the 12. Like, if we're looking at the booster from the front, they're at the 12 and the 6 o'clock position. And when the, when the crane, when Mechazilla goes to lift this thing, right, these slide up like this. They are also on hydraulics. You kind of have to lift them in tandem, right? Um, and those contain pilot dowels. So like what Ian was saying on NASA Spaceflight is right. They, they contain pilot dowels to make sure that the thing doesn't move left to right and hit the transport stand. When these things move, when these things, when the pilot... When the pilot dowels retract, they're on they're they're on hydraulics. They can retract out from the twelve and six positions on the booster. That's when you know they'll go they'll 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 be ready to lift. They'll retract and this piece will go back down. Don't forget to fast forward. Okay. Once again, you guys want scale here. Look at the ladder. Well, of course they cut the camera. You guys want scale? Look at the ladder right there. Look at the generator. Look at the, the gigantic Kenworth truck that's right there. This thing is on another level of big. That's why I always take the time to watch this stuff. It's really, 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 really cool. Question about um, where the hold down pins actually are. So since we have a good view of it right now on the left, could one of you describe what they are? Because I think some viewers do not see it. the hold down pins that we're looking at on the transport mount. Sorry, Trevor, I was looking at the back channel real quick. No, you're good, yeah. Do you just want to describe where those are for the viewer real quick now that they're unlatched? Yeah, so you can see them kind of sticking out from the upper edge of that transport mount. They're uh, kind of the, the, the... Is GSE in the foreground too? Isn't there railings on the stand? The launch mount. Those hold the booster within the transport mount, so it won't wiggle around, it won't tip out. Not on this like one, that. I don't think. Those obviously have to be unlatched to lift the booster out of the mount. Yeah. Yeah, there's a good view, like Ian said, on the left and right, and if you go back in the stream a little bit, you can see... Yeah, we don't, we don't really have an, an exact good view of it. The pilot dowel is behind this thing, and it kind of points at the booster. It's pointing, um... It's pointing that way. That way at the booster. The GSC in the foreground, too. Isn't there railings on that stand? Uh, the GSC will give a forced perspective and make it look smaller than it is. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure what ground service uh, equipment... What part of the pad are you talking about? Are you just talking about the stuff in the front? A normal suppression system is they've got tanks that get loaded up with the water. Uh, we have seen some tanker trucks recently, so it's possible that those may be playing a role in that. Uh, in terms of actually reusing the water, uh, I'm sure as much as they would like to, I don't think they can. Because yeah, the Kenworth Artusis, right? Yeah. Point, it's Dude. already considered processed water. That's my buddy Sawyer so that talking also there. Be another reason for the uh, tanker trucks is to dispose of that water and just uh, fill it and refresh it. So, um... We have a new YouTube member, a new red team member, Tim M. Thank you for your support, and you'll get some access to some of Jack's amazing uh, photos of B9 and all other Starship stuff, plus a lot of other member-exclusive content, so thank you for your support. 
I do just um, want to add, I forgot, it was in our most uh, recent uh, video, actually, when it comes to Starbase. Uh, they get the tankers from a fire hydrant with a meter on it in Brownsville. It's very <laughs> interesting. Is the concrete underneath That's the awesome. OLM dry at this point? Um, we have another super chat from one of our YouTube moderators, Andrew R, saying, mm, serial numbers, except Maybe. for the, like, breakfast cereal spelling. <laughs> <laughs> Clever. Um, Very nice. At the what the next test will be. See, Jeff, this looks like we're probably the end of the summer. In a bit of a hold with the booster, it's not been lifted up. Just got here. What's the update? They lifted um, nine off of its sling. They're so they're gonna Patrick move. Patrick asks. They're gonna remove the alignment pins right there. So see this piece right here, tweets. That yeah. moves. There's one on the other side. Uh, first of all, there's one at 12 and six. We're looking at the one in the six o'clock position. If we're like looking at the booster from the front, there's one here. And we're looking at the one here. So, like, the perspective is like this, right? There's one on the other side, over here. When they lift it up out of the mount, those pins and that rail, like, that, that entire piece moves up and down with the booster, right? Uh, so when they lift the booster up, the, the pins go with it, and they lift those up, too. And that's those guide dowels are there to make sure that it doesn't hit the stand when they when they pull it up and put it back in, first of all. It, it basically aligns everything. That's why I call them pilot dowels, because it's steering the ship, so to speak, right? So um, they lifted nine up out of its, up off the stand, and they're what the next thing that they should do is remove the pins. The pins are, they'll automatically retract. Uh, this is all done remotely, which is pretty crazy to me. They'll retract the pins, and when they retract the pins, the two pin guides will actually retract back down onto the stand, and then they'll lift the booster up. The booster will free float. That's kind of what we're waiting for here. Uh, Aqualex, those chain railings are knee high. Yeah, I saw people walking around on them earlier, dude. Discovery, go at throttle up. You need to poop. Well, you better hurry up, man. They're going to lift soon. I think so. I think so, dude. Those don't look like regular railings, but I, I it took me a second to... Like, you're talking about those things right there, right? Those are, yeah, those are one, that's one meter. Those are one meter high. I saw a dude standing next to this uh, earlier. Maybe we can find it. No, that's on the pad. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? Knee high. But still, it's some type of safety railing or something. First integrated flight test. Yeah, it will very much depend on how this flight goes and what retrofits need to be made to GSE and um, Discovery. Go and throttle up. Um, and then actually, just today, uh, we published an article. Alex wrote it about what Starship has to do before launch. Paco, sixty-nine month um, resub. Thank you. Like, their future plans after launch and whatnot and kind of touches this question so would recommend reading that um 10 out of 10 would recommend <laughs> even though it's booster 9 you could say it's 9 out of 9 i guess <laughs> there you go um so one from mo cat lat i probably butchered that i'm sorry uh asking how long does concrete need to cure before a static fire sawyer do we know anything about that i don't think we've seen an exact number uh but i think it's safe to say it's similar to what you would say <coughs> uh toughened i would assume they're lifting so, to put it on the olm uh, yeah Les. Yeah. for those who don't know there's a uh, special type of concrete called fondag uh it's meant to be more durable which uh, as we've seen it still couldn't withstand the uh, forces of Starship, but it's still more durable than regular concrete. Uh, so it's, I guess the same as however long it would take to cure a large amount of that. Yeah, it's a good point. 
Um, I know um, my father's civil engineer is Vector, so I know way too much about this stuff. Oh, drone's up. Getting oh, yeah. nice shots there. So, are you the concrete? I wish I actually should probably go over there and be like, hey, you guys need another host? But, um, will Starship be used for the Artemis program? Yeah, Zumo. It, it will be used for the lunar lander, Artemis 3. The first return to the moon is going to be in a Starship derived lunar lander. Starship uh, HLS is what it's called, Human Landing System. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why do you think SpaceX is going ham on this thing? Absolutely. So, with the pad, guys, you guys got to. So, okay. Do, sorry, it's a little bit late. Collect your words, man. Collect your words. Okay, cool. So, with with the original like kind of base configuration that was just a concrete slab underneath the OLM, right? They obviously fired Starship on it and it obliterated the pad. Everybody knows that, right? We all saw that. Now, you got, people are asking about the concrete curing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is Fondag from what we understand. Uh, from what I understand, it looks like Fondag to me, like from the pumper trucks that came in and checked everything. Keep in mind, I didn't get a good look at them, and you don't know what type of concrete is in the damn concrete truck. You don't know for sure. There's more than one type of concrete. Fondag is designed for high temperatures and stuff. It's very thermally resistant structural concrete. It, good for a flame trench. But the thing is, is that a lot of the concrete that was directly underneath the business section of the booster is now metal plates for the sound suppressor. There are metal plates down there instead. So it, it, if, if I had to guess now, the concrete curing is not that big of a deal because the parts where you wanted the concrete to cure completely is now metal plates. So that means the outsides of the pad where they had to re-pour some of the concrete, that's the stuff you're probably gonna be worried about. But theoretically, if the booster is firing, right? If they fire the booster with the sound suppressor on it, you're never gonna, it, the concrete not being all the way cured is not that big of a deal because the water is going to quench the heat um, and the, the sound, the heat from the booster. I'm not entirely sure about the pressure, and we did know from the Starship IFT that the pressure is what cracked the concrete. It wasn't the heat. Literally, the force from the booster pushing down cracked it because it wasn't fully cured, right? So with the water, hopefully, because you can you can take away some of the heat in the form of steam, that it'll alleviate some pressure. I'm not sure, but it might. The energy has to go somewhere. So, but there are metal plates down there where you would want your concrete to be cured the most, right? They replaced them with the metal plates for the sound suppressor. There, there's there's five metal or six metal plates underneath there. They look like pizza slices almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Will Starship be lighter than the Saturn V? It, it confuses me because it's bigger. No, absolutely not, Azumo. Way to find out, you know. Starship is way bigger and way heavier than the Saturn V. Actually, it's not that much taller than the Saturn V, but it's way heavier. This thing's made out of stainless. Way heavier. And it has a lot more engines. It can move. It's full. It can move. So think about it like this, dude. Starship? can basically move what the Saturn V could move into space and it's reusable oh it's heavier it does more things usually a spaceship that does more things up in space is is higher mass Starship can do a lot more it's basically a, a Saturn V sized space shuttle so yeah oh yeah it's way heavier than the Saturn V way bigger it's also carrying a lot denser fuel in the first and second stages. Well, maybe not the first stage, but you get the idea. Did they choose not to put a water suppression system in before because they were trying to keep the cost of the pad as low as possible? Bandit, my... I heard some speculation, dude, that they weren't... They didn't get it installed in time. But also, at the same time... An interesting thing, I think, to take into account here, dude, is that how the... What do you put underneath a pad? Uh, what do you put in a pad underneath a rocket that generates 15 million pounds of thrust? What I, I made this argument at the time when everybody's like, Oh my God, SpaceX is so stupid. They're so stupid. What are they doing? Why do you, you know, flame deflector? That's so dumb. And I'm sitting there going, okay, because you have a solution for 72 meganewtons of thrust. 
and all the associated heat that comes with that. Um, dude, I'm pretty sure that if you put Super Heavy on a mobile launcher and put it over 39's flame trench, like 39A or 39B, and you lit it off, you'd get the same result. It would absolutely obliterate those pads. It would obliterate any pad. There is not a design that exists that's designed to deflect 15 million pounds of thrust. And however many BTUs of heat that comes with, you know, from from freaking 33 Raptor engines. So I think, I don't think it was SpaceX like, oh, we don't have time for a sound suppressor. Or, oh, you know, it'll be fine without the concrete. I don't think they had a solution. I think they needed to see it going and send the dang thing. And then get some data on, you know, what happens to the pad when the rocket takes off and leaves. But... The flip side of that is that they had the sound suppression system basically ready to go installed like the day after the IFT. So it, it also is very likely, it also is very likely that they didn't get it installed in time. It's possible. But then again, it does seem like it needs to be retrofitted. But then again, if the sound suppressor needs to be retrofitted, you need to dig a hole underneath the pad anyway. So, I mean, the rocket engines will do that. They did do that. They dug a nice hole. They excavated out exactly where you needed your sound suppressor to be, ironically. So, I mean, there is that. Especially not rapidly reusable. Bingo. Sorry to go back to my weight question, but Daily Mail has a comparison picture on the rockets, and they have Starship at 220,000 pounds and Saturn V at 260,000 pounds. That's why I was a bit confused. Yeah, yeah, Daily Mail is wrong. Yeah, there's no way... 260,000 pounds? For a Saturn V, no, not even close. That no, 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 no. The Saturn V weighs seven million pounds. Actually, seven, seven point three five. So seven million three hundred fifty thousand pounds fully fueled. There's no way that that's correct. Yeah, it should be around there. They're doing something with water pumps. They're shooting water underneath the uh, the rocket when it fires, Racer. It's kind of garden variety stuff with rockets. You, you shoot water underneath to quench the heat and uh, uh, absorb the sound from the engines. Yeah, Zumo, no way. Saturn V, Saturn V weighs over 7 million. SLS is 8 million pounds. There's, and Starship is bigger than both of those. Fully fueled, Starship... Starship's probably like 10 million pounds, if I had to guess. That's just a guess. I don't know off the top of my head. From Wikipedia, the Saturn V is 6.2 million pounds. Oh, I was close. I was off by, off by about a million, give or take. From Wikipedia, Saturn V is 6.5. Yeah, that seems about right. It makes seven and a half million pounds of thrust, weather guy. So, I mean, you and it's 1.1 TWR off the pad. Yeah, I said 7.25, I think, 7.35, something like that. But it's six, not seven. I'm an idiot. Disregard me. Oh, I didn't believe it. That's why they asked. Why are those numbers so off, though? They must be measuring something else, Azumo. Maybe the mass of the vehicle when it's not fully fueled. That might be the what's called dry mass. So dry mass of the vehicle is how much mass the vehicle is. So how much it weighs when there's no fuel inside of it. It's called final mass in rocket science because that's the mass you're going to get when you use all your fuel. C up. Super heavy gross mass is 3.6 or 7.9 million pounds. Propellant mass, 7, empty mass, 440,000. Yeah, I don't know where they're getting those numbers, dude. That's very weird. I have a theory. RGV got some pictures of the hot staging ring. Based on how it looks, my theory is that hot is that the hot staging on Booster 9 will be intentionally disposable, destructible from the ship engines igniting. If it has the same clamps as the ship, it could connect to the booster. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that sounds right. Messed up. They messed up the metric conversion? No way. 
<laughs> that's that's kind of funny. Kind of funny. It's kind of funny. You funny too. How many people would it take? How many people would it take to run under a lifting starship and transfer the energy out as they run away? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the energy's heat repair. I mean, you want a suntan? You get a suntan under there if you want. You might get a sunburn, though. <laughs> um, y yes. I'll just say yes. How much would it take? Yes. Yes, it would. <laughs> Will it be similar to Soyuz hot staging during launch? John, that's the plan from what we can tell, yeah. Yeah, like 10,000 people per second would work. I don't think people should stand underneath a rocket when the rocket engines fire and rep up. I mean... I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we shouldn't do that. Like, nobody should do that. Is the booster outdated already? Yeah. Yeah, hell of a way to go. I mean, Thump, you wouldn't feel it, that's for sure. It would be... I mean, basically, you just look up at the bottom of the rocket, smile, and wait for the flash. And then that's it. Okay, so the thermal mass capacity of a human is... Uh, oh, was a joke. <laughs> it would be interesting if they use ballistics gel or a dead cow to see if it vaporizes. Dude, you could put one of those ballistic dummies down in the flame trench repair and you'd never find any pieces of it. I'm serious, you'd never find it. You'd never find it. There'd be nothing... It, be nothing left. The overpressure event from a rocket is on par. Like, okay, so something like super heavy, the pressure wave that comes out when the engines ignite, think atomic blast. You, you, ever, you ever watch that footage from like the 40s of them like showing a house getting blown away by an atomic blast? Literally that. That's what happens in the flame trench. That's the amount of heat and pressure movement we're talking about here, man. <laughs> Anything you put down there, you, I mean... They're either going to find it a couple miles away, maybe one or two discernible pieces, or, or it'll just completely vaporize it. Have you, or do you plan to see Oppenheimer? Well, it's not out yet, Jay, but yeah, I'm going to see it this weekend, dude. Or at least I don't think it's out yet. Either way, I'm going to see it this weekend. Brimo and I are going to double feature. We're going to watch Barbie first, and that's going to suck, and then Oppenheimer is going to make up for it. It's going to be great. Think about it. Think about it. If you watch Barbie and it's and it's god awful, right? That's just gonna make Oppenheimer better. Oppenheimer's just gonna it's gonna make Oppenheimer that much better. It's like a palate cleanse. <laughs> New kid. Oh, thanks for the prime sub, man. <laughs> it's not. I know we're not watching it in seventy millimeter Reaper. We had to. Brimo and I tried to get a museum. Uh, not a museum. Museum. We tried to go to a movie theater. Uh, that had Barbie ending right as Oppenheimer started. The the only place we could find didn't have 70 mil IMAX, but it does have the upgraded sound, so kind of good. What if Barbie is better? Then I'll be pleasantly surprised. Have you ever played Astroneer? New Kid, uh, I know of Astroneer. I've never played it. I'm more of a Stationeers kind of kind of guy. Why'd they stop the lift? Pray, pray, calm down. Keep the booster on your stand, man. It should be taking the pins out very soon. Yeah, something is sticky. It looks. 
what? What if Oppenheimer leaves you depressed? Well, you know what, dudes? Like, it's this thing. Like, you remember when that Chernobyl miniseries came out on HBO? I already knew what happened. So, I know the story. The story's pretty good. The story of the Manhattan Project's cool. Very cool. Uh, but, yeah. I, uh... I know the story. I know, I know Oppenheimer. I know that story. So, I mean... It's like watching Titanic. Spoiler alert. The boat sinks. Huh? <laughs> Sufficient way to add propellant. Um, it's better to just make one large tank than three small ones. Um, let's see. We have Music of Wolves. J. Cool Cat Name. Hashtag the cat from... I had a panic Space attack during Chernobyl. I Never had one before or since. Thank you. You had a panic attack, Liquid? What do you What do you mean? Like watching the miniseries, dude? It's stressful. It's stressful, especially when you know what's hap when you know what happens, right? It's like the scene in Kiev when the radiation alarm goes off. Up, up, up! Right pins coming down. The right alignment pins coming down, guys. We're gonna. It's gonna lift soon. See that? That's this thing, but on the other side. In the lab, yeah. Liquid, what killed me is that. Like I said, I knew the story, so when they showed the scene where the guys hit the AZ-5 button, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, don't hit the, why are you going to hit the, oh, he hit the button. He did it again! Ah! <laughs> you know? You lived through it. Lived through it, and Three Mile, yeah, yeah. Wait, did you, you lived through Chernobyl, or Three Mile? Three Mile, partial meltdown. The, the, the containment vessel contained it. Chernobyl had no containment vessel. It was not contained. The time both... Ah, I got you. I got you, man. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Right on, dude. Chernobyl's a horror series mask and historical drama. The music score... Yeah, dude. It was really good. Really good. Yeah, the liquidators, Azumo, for sure. SCP-154 is breach containment. Left pin is down, baby. I lived the during Fukushima. Yes. <laughs> hey, Eagle. Tier 2, 40 month. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. What's going on, buddy? How are you? <laughs> nice, Kuro. Apparently, there is an SCP from Massachusetts. What? 115 in Vegas today. Ah, oh, it's okay, Eagle. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Luft. Them all to the cape by oh, the yeah. Stacked over Dude. 39A. We originally... Oh, hang on. Uh, I'll answer later. That oh. is moving fast. Uh, she is that hauling is out of that transport now. Hauling Have you seen this? Yes. Oh wow, nice one. So yes, nice. that's blues. No, that's blues. Uh, <laughs> concept. I like it. Finally, so again, like we were saying, we were waiting for it to smooth out. So, everything. guys, I, I just want to point out here, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to mute Sora. Sora is my boy, but I just want to point out here that, hey, Vinny is fifty-one month resub. This, this is all being done remotely. SpaceX is literally trying to automate or semi-automate integration, right? There's nobody there. You see anybody there? There's no one there. Now, contrast that to how everybody else builds rockets. There's a bunch of people putting the rocket together, you know, stacking the rocket. There's people using cranes and stuff. Blah, blah. No, 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 no. The pad is building the rocket right now, and it's, they're doing it remotely. No one's, no one's at the pad right now. Everyone's down the street at Mission Control. Mission Control is actually assembling the rocket. Or, well integrating the booster right now. They're not assembling the whole rocket. There's no starship to put on top of it right now. One hop. Crane assisted takeoff right there. That's a hop. Does that count? Like, I, I, I want to point out, and this is part of the reason why I cover this stuff here. I want to point out that that right there, no one's doing that. SpaceX is the only one that's ever done that. This is really, really cutting edge stuff. Putting the rocket together with no humans there. There's nobody there. Hey, Tech. Hope you're well. I'm doing just fine. Look at that. 
Mod check. Yep, no one there, dude. Brodinger and Hover, praying to God, praying to God. So right now what they're doing is they, they did their initial lift. They're going to sit here, wait a second, make sure that it's the dynamics on the lift is actually okay. And they should be go. they should be good to go again. What they're checking for is to make sure like the booster isn't bending and flexing in a place that it shouldn't. I mean, this stuff looks like it's solid, but it actually is. It's not brittle either, but it does. It, the whole booster will stretch a little bit when you pull it up off the ground. Just a smidge. They're making sure that it didn't stretch too much. Yeah. I like rockets. Yeah, me too. More rockets, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wingardium Leviosa. Get your get your wizardry out of here. The black ring on the skirt is part of Booster 9's heavy skirt reinforcement. Yeah, I see it. Someone's shining the light on it over there. I hope they don't drop. Don't drop that stuff, Tony. Don't drop it. A smidge of 150 feet in the air is a fair amount. I'd say toothless. She's probably the the. The business end of the boosters right here of the booster is probably about 50 feet. Maybe 60 feet. Yep, they're just waiting for it. They're waiting for it to settle. Once it settles, then you can pull. They also got a tension. Well, they're, the, these cables on the lift is already tensioned. But. Boop. Boop. Porter Elon bought stainless steel tubes! Do I have to tell you what the frick you can do with stainless steel tubes? Oh, there's a searchlight. Police, hands up. I give up. It looks like something, the nozzles, I don't know what this is. See all these, what appear to be wires there? I don't know what those are. Yeah, see the drone. The drone is looking for something. They're looking at what all that wire wiring is on there. I don't think they're supposed to be there. I mean, what gave that away? Yeah, the Aziz lights in some kind of pattern. Aziz light! Flash twice if you can read us. Oh, I don't have to code. Oh, I just, oh, I see some flashing. I think it says, drink. Oh. Oval oh my god. Wow. Oh, there we go. Proceeding uh, with yeah, the lift. Yeah, it appears it's the uh, drone light, I should point out, but uh, Oval that, Team, really? Wow. Oh, and there I we go. I want my Oval Team, please, said no one. It is lifting again. There I we go. I cannot believe that drone has such a powerful light. That is impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah, as they check the base of the engines, it looks like around that. Uh, Definitely picking up speed again, thankfully, and it looks like it may have. And then it pauses. Stopped again as we <laughs> once again see the swinging. This this whole drone with the light on there feels like a sci-fi thing of you know like the police robot like coming in just scanning the awesome area then flying away. Guys, comparatively to like SLS, and don't get me wrong, SLS is still pretty damn cutting edge for what it is, even though it's using some pretty old technology, right? The fact that this thing is up in the air and it's going to get put on the pad in, in a couple of hours. That's what I mean about remote control pads like this. That's pretty damn impressive, man. 56 maybe? Uh, is that six or three? Yeah, something, something stuck. Like they're wondering there towards the left. Yeah, that's a six. They're wondering on about... Yeah, we, oh, hey, nice. SpaceX, you put the drone light just, just a little to the left. <laughs> a little to the left. I don't see 154. Ooh, 154. 154. <laughs> good reference, good reference. This Thanks. is more Especially reference. Especially because I saw EJ yeah. in the back channel. Yes, he's back there. And he's typing now. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. Anyway. Hi. <laughs> For those who don't know, it's a reference to a uh, Wingflex video. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic if you haven't seen it. I what believe the it's a Boeing triple. I feel wing. called out, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel called out. Snap, which was at 154, which they then continued to show the replays. Yeah, if, it's I don't like this. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Component destruction tests. Um, intentional, yeah. It's just intentional, and it's it's very helpful if you don't like flying on airplanes to know that it takes you know 154 percent of the worst loads you would ever see in flight to break that wing off. You got NSF. 
they are always watching. Again, thank you for explaining the reference because I, for one, did not get it, but I Trevor. that shouldn't surprise anyone at this point. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> hey, Brandon, um, what's up, dude? Let's see. Here's a question from Lee um, that we'll just quickly go through real quick while we're in a bit of a hold. Apart from rockets in space, what other things do y'all enjoy in your free time? Cars. Let's go around the horn. Ian, let's start with you. Ooh. On the spot, so Ian I guess my top enjoys are definitely astronomy. Traffic, I spent a, uh, lights. embarrassing amount of money over the past few months. Um, video games are definitely another one, um, as well as just relaxing after work. I, guess. I like traveling, which is very stereotypical, <laughs> but I guess those are like my big hobbies. Discovery, um, go at throttle up. Yeah, just like seeing the world, you know. And then, Sawyer, what about you? Wait, people do things other than just space stuff? No. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely into uh, photography, for sure. Uh, that's a good friend of mine near here, Joe. Feel better, by the way. Uh, <laughs> he said, is yes. a photographer. And pineapples. Yep. Stuff. Um, also, concerts, for sure. My dad and I, that's become our tradition. So live music is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, video games as well. And uh, I'm one of those weird people that actually does like sports and follows it quite regularly uh most of my teams though are terrible so. <laughs> yeah that can add to the fun yeah um, it's uh, for those who follow american football i've been a new york jets fan my whole life there's a picture of one oof. with the jets hat i was duped yeah you did not choose a good team there so yeah. booster uh, is the rotating sorry to interrupt the booster is rotating oh right yeah now. Uh, again, possibly to get a better view. Huh? Very interesting. He's a uh, Yankees yeah, fan, too. You can see the light slowly. Oh, now it looks like the light's moving. <laughs> Apparently, this is standard for Alex. I'm sorry, I was just going to grab It looks like they're inspecting <laughs> the base of the vehicle. This is standard. It rotates. Alex is saying it yeah, rotates here. And then finish okay, this question. Yeah. I. I'm a big climber, um, so I climb a lot of the time, do my research position, and of course listen to Taylor Swift. You gotta bring it up once. Um, let's see, we have a new <laughs> member, T -Swift? Ryan, All right. just became Pat Rat. Thank you for your support. Back, and then into the left. A super chat from Starbase for real. Um, the those SF like drones remind me of the city scanners in Half Life Two. Can't wait to yes. see Booster 9 engines firing against the steel plates. Um, I have no idea what that game is, but it sounds yeah, like Ian is in agreement. Embarrassing me, Trevor. Game. Phenomenal, phenomenal game. That is exactly what I was thinking, Starbase, so far. Thank you. And Trevor, come on, get cultured, man. You're worse than Adrian. <laughs> Adrian and I need to have a competition of, like, who knows less <laughs> about pop culture. We need to like fly Adrian out here and have him, you and him, just do like a seventy-two hour movie marathon. Not enough time. Uh, yeah. I should point out, by the way, that uh, the booster has. Stopped. I think so, Zuma. Uh, Zuma, just ask me. Tag at EJSA and ask me questions. Yes, that's why they're moving this booster here. They're using Booster Nine as a test mule to make sure the sound suppressor works. All the wa the water on the pad. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. This, I do not think this is anywhere near final stack. Heck, I'm not even sure that Booster 9 is going to fly. And if it does, it's going to get expended because of that whole hot staging thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Guys, ask me questions, dude. I, I know I know about space flight. That is my thing. Look, I have a hat that says NASA on it. That That's... that I'm basically, like, an expert on everything. No, I'm just kidding. I know a good deal. I'm not the best at it, but I know a good deal of what's going on here. So, if you have questions, ask away. You know, the, the hat, though, it adds, like, plus 30 to knowledge or something. Fraction of it. Like, more, you're more intelligent if you have it on. Of the booster, that is it's a hot dog a taco. No. With either the transport stand or the orbital launch mount, um, whichever, you know, is more relevant here. So, they use All right. those to She's kind of fine-tune the position of the booster and guide it directly into place. Do you think the new sound suppressor system yeah, is going to work? Power. Yeah. Plus well, 40 to intelligence. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no it's got to be at least that. I remember when we first heard about us. Hat of smartness, indeed. Now it's just you guys normal. know. 
By the way, I should point out. Why are you so cool? <laughs> that is not the first thing I think of when I look in the mirror. Man. Is the <laughs> Why is the sky fires? blue? So. Because the dinosaurs. That's what that cool sound is. <laughs> he he had booster go burr. <laughs> Yeah, people oh, in thanks, chat Ryan. are asking. What are they going to do with Booster what Nine? The cables are underneath Booster Nine. I don't think any of us so... know, um, but it seems like it's not an issue given SpaceX has. Aperture priority A E. Please sit on my yeah, face. Uh, Sorry. Get Sorry. We got we'll get nice that on the NSF stream. Other engine serial numbers. <laughs> For those of you who aren't a member and who did not get to see Jack's up close photos, uh, the drone ships that the boosters land on in the ocean, do they have yep, pumps that hold seawater to spray on the booster? <laughs> they're probably using right water on board, like monkeys. I d they're probably using non potable fresh water. No, I wouldn't spray down the booster with salt water. That's probably yeah, not sorry, a good idea. Like <laughs> um, so, booster is continuing to move upward. It should stop fairly soon and then it will swing over the OLM where they'll then do oh, okay, minor checks push. before starting to lower down and whatever. But this yeah, is you don't, generally don't want to in, inundate so the vehicle with salt water monkeys. That's why they don't just land the boosters awesome in the ocean. Now Rocket Lab, on a side note, and does land their boosters in the ocean and it right seems to be working. But Kind of straight up. You know, I was thinking about Rocket Lab landing their boosters in the ocean, and they're planning on reusing one of those engines that got inundated with salt water, that that, lit, that got dunked, right? And I was thinking about it, and you, you know, because Rocket Lab's using electronic fuel injection, they have an electric motor moving the liquid fuel and oxidizer into their Rutherford engines, there's literally less plumbing. There's way less plumbing. The motor is not nearly as complicated. That's how they can probably get away with doing something like that. But even then, if I dunked a, 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 a jet engine or a rocket engine into salt water like that, I would probably take the whole thing apart and put it back together, just to be absolutely sure. You never know. I mean, so it, it's like if a, you know you avoid cars that have been flooded, like the plague, because you don't know what's happened. Water got everywhere inside of that. Especially cars that get dunked in salt water. That's just... Nope. If anybody's wondering what that looks like, there's a YouTuber called Tavarish. He does a lot with cars. He bought a $1.2 million supercar for 500 grand, and you'll see why you don't buy flooded flooded cars. Yeah, there's a really good, there's a really good reason. The guy's still picking sand out of the damn thing. I don't see really a need at this point for it to go from the top down if you already have that much extra water uh, coming in sideways and uh, it's technically kind of from above with the fire axe. Dude. Yeah. Um, Look at that freaking thing. Let's see. We have a quick uh, super chat. Yeah, Hank, um, right? Exactly. He's still pulling like salt water, uh, uh, water out of the dang thing. The dang thing hasn't been submerged in uh, flight years. System, well, about a year. Which we know that was one of the things that... Is there a hold? ...did not go to plan on the first launch. They're going slow with the this booster are. Yeah. Wants to go up with a match and They're moving out. in increments. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> when they move in increments like this, they did this with Booster 8 the first time they lifted it up. When they move in increments like this, it... That means they're going slow to make sure that the booster is reacting to the dynamic load conditions. Okay, what does that mean? That, that all right. Basically, like I said, when you lift this thing up, it's going to stretch. The booster is going to stretch a little bit. Why? Well, most of it is hollow, hollow metal, and then there's a lot of heavy stuff down at the bottom, namely like right in this area right here, like like not up there or right here so much, but right there. Basically, those rocket engines are really, really freaking heavy, and they're pulling on it, and they're going to stretch the stainless just a little bit. Just a smidge. Just just a little bit. Going slow like this is to make sure you're... Uh, making sure that they're... Uh, basically not stretching the booster too much. To, to Like, if I, if I had to put it into plain English, there's... They're trying to avoid it, avoid shock loading up, shock loading up uh, forces on the booster. That's why they're going slow. The first time they moved booster eight, they were they went slow like this. I mean, now, now keep in mind, 
this is not slow for any other for any rocket no rocket gets put on the stand this fast this is fast for anything but it's slow comparatively once they had booster 8 up and off the pad a couple of times right they lifted it really quickly I think they're just making sure that the booster doesn't move around and it doesn't stretch. The other thing to take into account is Booster 9 has components on it that 8 didn't have, which probably explains why they're going slow again. It's not the same design. For instance, the heat shield that's built into the bottom. Booster 8 did not have that. It didn't have that thing, right? The, of course, move the camera right when I go to point. Yeah, just do it again. It's fine. Yeah, again. Okay. See that? The heat plate? Booster 8 didn't have that. And I, I bet you... I bet you there are some load sensors on board here watching, measuring how the booster is stretching. And I'll, I mean, SpaceX clearly sees something because the drone is, be, they're shining a light on the heat shield. So there's a reason why they're going slow. I mean, you could see all, see all this taped stuff? I'll bet you those are, those are some type of sensor. See that? There's one after every engine. See that right there? I'll bet you those are testing to see what it's like lifting the thing up with, with that stuff attached to it. Yeah, exactly, Aqualux. You saw it right when I right when I saw it. Yeah. That yeah. Being able to see the whole bottom side and then um, heat shielding. In fact, I'll bet you that's what these wires are. I'll bet you those wires are attached to uh, a sensor that's sensing the stretch on the bottom of the booster those i'll bet you that's what's that's what all those are connected to because if you look they're connected see they're right look at them they're right there see that they're taped to the sides of the rocket nozzles okay scratch that that's that's not like a load sensor i have no idea what that thing is yeah the nozzle the wires are, are weird it could be a it could be a gas sensor, yeah. Interesting. Debt cord? They wouldn't they wouldn't have it primed here if they were just doing a test off the pad. Falcon, you gen generally want that kind of stuff on there when the thing goes to fly. They wouldn't be igniters? I don't think so. Glitched. It's some kind of sensor, but I don't know what it's for. I don't know why you would just tape it to the side like that. The back gym, like what I mentioned before. So the outer engines and the inner engines are all the same engine. The difference is the outer engines do not have. Yeah, a temp sensor, Watson. That would make sense, but why would they? So like, here's the thing. I don't. I don't think you're wrong. But why would they be? Why would they be measuring temperature out the bottom of the nozzle when the engines are off and the booster doesn't have any propellant in it? It's very interesting, right? Unless those sensors aren't being used right now, they might be used for something else. They might be used when they go to static fire the thing. Oh, temporary, not temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there, clearly there's some instrumentation on this thing that we don't know about and we're not exactly sure what it's for and it's not an accident that spacex is shining that drone light on it so that that's the reason why they're going and they're stopping and they're moving a little bit and going stopping moving a little bit they're moving in increments they usually when booster eight was stacked for the final for its final time like before they launched it dude they had that thing up and on the pad in like 45 minutes it was just now keep in mind that thing's 30 feet wide. It's 30 feet wide, 220 feet tall. The first stage on Starship is taller than most rockets with second stage and payload fairing. So the, the, the time here is unbelievable. That is an insanely big piece of equipment to move around in one shot like this. You mean Booster 7? Yeah, the one that launched, excuse me. Could it be measuring swaying? I don't know. I don't know, dude. Yep, right now, so they, the chopsticks kinda, if the launch pad is like right here, the chopsticks pick the booster up and then they move it to the side and then they put it down. They're moving it now. You can see the thing rotating. Costs, they got rid of those and now they only use 
pulls electricity from likely Tesla battery packs. They probably still use some on the vehicle. Indeed. Um, we have five gifted red team memberships from Chris Ray, and then another ten from Hey Jimmy, Randy sorry, Meyer. sorry so you if missed you guys me. Got one of those. Make sure you thank them. You in always chat. say thank you, but um, you're busy. Sorry, boss. Hey, hey don't worry those, about it, Jimmy. Really Cheers, thanks, buddy. Sports. I appreciate so it. Here, drink to that, man. Um, to both of you. Leafy asks, uh, what is the mass of Booster 9? Be Sawyer, do we have any good Leafy? estimates on that? Uh, I believe it was, uh, at last check, With around Canadian 120 money? tons, if I recall correctly. Uh, and that is the empty mass, I should say. Obviously, it's, uh, I believe, a little more once it's fueled up. You found my Christmas present. Booster is now moving what downward towards key? the OLM. What is it? Excellent. It's a gun so, rack. Yeah. A gun rack? Yes, I believe the booster is around a gun rack. thousand tons when fully loaded with propellant. I don't even own a gun, a let alone many guns that would necessitate an entire rack. Yeah, I know Elon has talked a little bit about um, how even defining what dry mass means in the sense is somewhat complicated. Um, but yes. Oh, and Thomas uh, Hayden here in the back channel, uh, one of the NSF members saying, or NS NSF uh, contributors, uh, saying they think Booster was about 200 tons, which, yes, I, I do remember that. I believe that I was, was for the ship. Yes. I believe that mass was for Booster 4 or Booster Dude, 7, so look there's a decent for that. There's what a, really a good shot. Chance that that thing is huge, yeah. man. We saw... Yeah, whoa! Yeah, it's less oh, it's the drone. I was like, is that a shooting star? No, it's just the drone. You know, more or the bird. More shielding and whatnot, and then... And the chimes. Dude. And other ways, I'm sure that. That is so nuts, so. man. It could be that it's been roughly the same. But okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Fellas, look at the staircase. Look at that staircase. There's your scale. All right. Now, keep in mind, those are half flights. So that's one flight of stairs, two flights of stairs. The deck of the OLM is probably about five, six stories off the ground. Look at the size of that freaking rocket. It's huge. It's absolutely insane. Birds aren't real. Could send a payload to the gas giants? Yes. See? Absolutely. The staircase the looks like a staircase giants. for kids. Yes, it, it looks like a play, piece of playground yeah. equipment. Um, it is not a piece of playground Mars. equipment. I mean, that booster is freaking huge. Missions. You're going to eventually need large pressurized rovers. Um, to the gas giants, yes, it definitely could take some payloads to the gas giants. You'll need a good amount of refueling, but you really can't get much payload on Starship, if any, out past Saturn. Uh, that's because Starship has a very, very high dry mass on its upper stage. I was going to bed. An actual lift? Yeah, dude, look! Okay, Dark Matter, what do you got? If Stretching, if any, would create a temperature change, but I can't figure out why they would place sen sensors near the nozzles. Yeah, I, that's... that's. I don't know, dude. I can't figure that one out. These are definitely... These sensors are definitely measuring stretching. I, I'm pretty damn sure. The reason why I know is SLS had similar sensors that pretty much like are super taped like that. It had a similar thing uh, on the on like uh, core stage one to to measure foam cracking, to measure how the foam handles when they like go to lift the thing up. The the orange foam on the side. The sensors look exactly like that. They they're they're about the same surface area in in everything. So I'm pretty sure those are like. These ones up here seem to be testing to see if this heat plate is going to crack or not. Those ones down there and all this extra stuff, it's some type of developmental sensor. But yeah, Dark, I have no freaking clue. I can't figure that one out. It's more efficient. Yeah, it's a strain uh, gauge. That's what it's called, Trunk. Sorry, I was see. blanking, man. Uh, William Poke with a $5 super chat. Thank you for your support. Um, Lenny James, how long will Booster 9 be positioned o over the OLM, and how's your summer going? Sawyer, do you want to take that one? Bruno's going to hate uh, me, but yeah, I found Yeah, again, this. it's, as you've seen, it was getting the position over the OLM, making sure it was aligned, and then lowering it down. You may see it pause a little bit, again, because we have that kind of swaying side to side. The guy wants to trade, but that's that why it's a little bit free, but that thing is it cool. continues downward, uh, so nice that snow. it goes down, and, uh, lines up with all of the uh, mounts and pins and everything that At different phases uh, of the are on the orbital launch mount. Team, so I, uh, I think it's, again, just taking it slow and steady at this point, getting rid of that uh, sideways momentum, and then continuing to lower it down. 
and uh, my summer's going great, thanks. Yeah, Perigo, yeah. maybe. There's the drone it's flying possible. around. They have yeah. multiple drones out right now. It's like it's like it's being surrounded by bugs. <laughs> and if your battery dies, that's an easy way to uh, put another drone up instead of having to wait for it to recharge. Yep. Oh, booster's coming back down. Looks like Here it tilted a little bit, too, on the way down. This is Raptor Engine 117. Oh, yeah, slowly but surely, hear? it's coming down. I gotta say, I really... Raptor Chief, you mind telling me what the heck you're doing on that spacecraft? Sir, finishing this launch. Dun 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 You know? Alright. Yeah, it's an old game, I know. Alright, cool. Yeah. Um... But while we have this view, we have a super chat from Happy Cappy um, saying Jack is awesome, huge part of NSF success. Jack is in the trenches sometimes, literally. So yes, Jack, know you're appreciated. Um, and thank you again for this amazing view. No um, problem. I'm happy to do it. Yeah, and then another comment from Josh saying Jack is absolutely rocking that camera angle. Excellent work. Um, let's see. Then, okay, here's another one for you, Sawyer. Uh, Yeo uh, Ramos asks, do we know how many Raptor engines will ignite for the booster to be caught? Um, I don't know if we've heard a fully updated number. Uh, again, it's still working on the idea of getting yeah, this to know. launch first sure. before dealing with the catch, but am I wrong in here that it was Maybe originally just, yeah. the three center engines at one point, the center ring? believe that's what I remember hearing that the why is there scaffolding well, here because they're still all testing 13 things for yeah, boost that won't be there during the launch three, I'm pretty four, sure those Christmas lights are not um, going to be there either they're not landing. Christmas lights they're work lights I believe so paying. yeah we saw it Lundprod yeah we saw the picture you see the picture um, then we have a uh, gifted red team membership from Ryan so Ryan thank you for the support and if you receive that make sure to thank him in chat um and boosters continuing to lower. It looks like we're right about where we'll start losing view of the engines behind all of the scaffolding. Um, Look at that. So, thing, Ian, could you, you once again just walk us through me. what we'll see in the next few minutes while the booster gets mounted to the pad? Yeah, so over the next few minutes, we're going to see periodic stops and starts of the lift. Actually, I think it looks like uh, it's slowed down a bit there but we're definitely going to see the lift slow down there's going to be periods where it pauses reorients itself either rotates or tilts a little bit because you've got to get perfect alignment to slot it into the orbital launch mount so this kind of gets into the slower more delicate and detailed parts of the lift um, but we're going to see it slowly make its way down and kind of shimmy its way into place uh, inside the orbital launch mount over the next few minutes dude yeah, you know, SpaceX has their handful, or their hands full. So, basically what they're going to do, guys, you, you guys saw the transport stand. The transport stand had those pins that locate the booster and align it for all the other hold-down points. There's another set of those on the OLM. It's right there. See it? I don't honestly remember if this thing lifts up, but... When they lower the booster down, you're going to see a, a basically a pilot hole right here. It's literally just a structural alignment pin. This thing... I forget if this one goes up or down, but you can clearly see it's behind that hatch right there. So, yep, see? There's your alignment pin right there. Or at least that's the bottom part of it. The hole is up there. So basically, they'll get it close, and then they'll move the alignment pins into place. And the, the front of the alignment pin is tapered like a cone, and it'll find... the It'll find the hole. <laughs> and that'll lock the booster in. And then they'll lower it with the pins in position. And then the, the all the hold down points will open up and grab it. Just on a side note, you're wondering where they grab the booster. There's 20 hold down points in between each motor. They grab right here on that lip. See the lip right here? Now... They can grab anywhere in between here, but why would you want like, what? So why do you need to alignment align it? Well, uh, getting the alignment right is super important, so you can attach the fuel lines. That's yeah, you probably want to do that. Phrasing. Discovery. Go at oh, I'm not doing phrasing. That's hey, Matt. One hundred months, Again, man. I'm sorry to be the pessimist of the team, but I think that you still don't have the uh, hot staging 
equipment on it yet, and we haven't Feel tested the all the Just send it. engines with the Wrench, uh, like steel you. plate. So I think that we may see it removed once more and then uh, come back. So I don't think it's going to be like six or seven uh, mounts. Yeah, maybe I that we've seen. I think that's a lot of month of Roonies. So it is. Month hopefully of we can see these puppies fly Thanks first, if not man. one more time. Yarg beat you to 100, though. Sorry. Yeah. And I just one comment from Lauren real quick that Whammy. made me smile, and I thought I would share it. They say, the NSF community is so generous, helps us all. <laughs> Man, it's Yarg. Oh, I'm NSF. telling him that. And yes, that's an important point. It's you guys that make all of this possible, which allows us to like it, power down there getting this views, is my, this is my allows us to have stuff. Starbase Live, Space Coast Live, McGregor Live. Family friendly. And everything. This is my so really, thank you guys for everything. Dick. Thank you stuff, those man. I love this stuff, dude. It's really cool. Uh, and then so do my buddies over at NASA Space Flight that are... always go to NSF.live, yeah, and that here. links to all of our... Yeah, what's he going to do? Cameras. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me booster, and I go high. So, here's another question. OLM, ominously large mushroom. New viewers. Wow, you guessed that? You must be psychic or something. Oh, orbital, orbital launch mount. It's this big metal thing that they attach the booster to. To make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But then the fact that it's the thing, we've seen. Uh, they're a not going to burn the light. They're not irresponsible. Maybe no, I don't even think so. the they wouldn't fire the engines with all this um, crap up here, all the system, scaffolding. But there have been no definitive proof either way. Um, you suck. They could have been test pieces for a whole nother program, for all we know. Um, but it seems like it's still being worked on right now, as we don't have any definitive. Um, Proof that we've seen any pieces so far, and again, they're not really needed right now. You can test the boosters' engines, you can cryo test it, pressure no, test it, no. without the uh, hot stage equipment on. That can be put on later, like Sawyer was saying. They could bring it back and put it on. Yeah, um, here's a quick question from uh, Aaron Drone Services: Does SpaceX use ton as in two thousand pounds or twenty two hundred pounds? Um, so. Ton, T-O-N, is the U.S. ton, which is 2,000 pounds, um, I believe. And then the T-O-N-N-E is a metric ton, which is 1,000 kilograms, which I believe translates to 2,200 pounds. Um, so it's the spelling that will give away which... Um, I believe these are metric job, tons Trevor. from what yeah. we've seen. SpaceX Just uses metric tons. Yeah, yeah caveman, um, for sure, for sure. Can we get a banana for scale? MFFL Brian asks, uh, will they test the water daily system again, but at full thrust and B9 okay. at the same time? What are you guys' thoughts no, on that? We'll start with Ian and then there. go to Sawyer. I think um, the deluge system again, but at full thrust and booster 9. I think they would begin testing the deluge system with only a few engine static fire, maybe only a single engine static fire. Um, it might be kind of a big step to go all the way to 33 engines with the deluge system. Um, I think we're going to kind of see a step-by-step -step incremental approach to that, and then eventually, if they're confident enough in their system, move it all the way up to 33 engines. Because the last thing you want is to destroy your brand new flame diverter, because say, you know, you misinstalled a bolt, or you, your calculations were it's, slightly off here. Why do I you have a green banana? Oh, it's not right. This, yeah. On something this big. It's not right. Yeah. See? see? Um, not right. Yeah, Sorry, I, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, we will see it at some point. It, again, it may start with a Raptor engine or 7 or 14 when we see it with the full uh, steel plate as well. But at some point, they're going to have to test it with all 33 engines, even if, say, the engines aren't at full thrust, like we saw with Booster 7, even though it turns out that data didn't really help much in terms of saving the concrete. But I think we would see it that way. So, yeah, I think it'll happen, just not the first test. Drones inspecting yeah. the tower. I'll be curious to see when they decide to do that, and especially with the static fire campaign. Yes, yes. Smart. If, Sorry, oh. real quick. Yes, this is interesting. The drone is now shining its light at the chopsticks carriage. I don't know if you all can see that, but oh, it, yeah. looks be, yeah. huh. it looks to be checking out one of the skates. I did hear a weird noise, but, uh, you know noises happen it's probably fine it's probably fine <laughs> yeah i mean we saw something fall off earlier and that hasn't stopped them at this point from lifting so 
I mean, this kind of gives me a, a throwback to, I believe it was Booster 4 or maybe one of Booster 7's initial lifts, where uh, the rotating mechanism of the chopsticks just died because it popped a hydraulic line and spilled all the hydraulic fluid over the pad. Yeah. That was seven. Yeah, that was, that was I, I think we were on that stream together, Sawyer. That was a uh, an interesting one, because we're like, what that was, was that? I don't know Something? if it was, but... Yeah, but... I was like, that's yeah, yeah, the one the the dumpster fire. <laughs> that one too, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting to see what they're looking at up there, particularly on that right side, it looks like. It doesn't seem like they... This is the only side they've been on, Jack, right? They haven't swung around to the other side as well? You know, I could have missed it. I'm doing, like, three things at once out here, but, uh, I, yeah, so I don't feel comfortable saying strongly one way or the other. Adversity... It might just be the camera angle, but it looks like it looks like it's kind of like the booster is kind of bowing like that almost. I think that's just the angle, though. I'm pretty sure, but I, I definitely see what you're saying. It definitely looks like it's bent. You're just kidding. It looks fine. Yeah. anyway so it's fine wow i would say good one but that's kind of sad <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah uh... yeah see, nova it Jack, should, well, should be the same james are you getting eaten alive by mosquitoes good question no i haven't felt a single mosquito all night it's the heat i think that's how good. hot is it down there jack is it humid or just dry heat it's obscenely humid. <laughs> uh, by the way, it looks like the drone has moved downward again. Uh, mm. I don't see the spotlight on the chopsticks as bright anymore. So keeping an eye on the booster, I don't see it moving just yet, but you can see the drone light kind of shining towards the right side there. Again, probably just making sure the clearance is okay, all the equipment on the booster looks okay, nothing fell off, and so on. Um, so yeah, so Ian, uh, how much further does the booster have left to go down? Um, yeah, it's got about mm, two feet. to three meters, if I had to guess. That's feet. a very, very rough approximation, but I'd say around three meters down. Hey, of um, course. For the U.S. folks, about ten feet. Uh, right now, like I said, we're getting into kind of the slower part of the lift where they need to align it, make sure nothing is going to impact the uh, orbital launch mount, um, and making sure it's aligned correctly to actually land directly on the uh, uh, the hold down points. So there's, there's kind of a lot of like gymnastics here with multiple parts. I don't playing. think so, Tomas. Uh, no. The orbital launch mount needs to be uh, the uh, hold down points need to be extended. The booster needs to be aligned. The chopsticks need to align the booster. It's it's a bit of a process here. Oh, and the booster is going back down now again very yep. slowly and carefully. Yep. Yeah, I was about to say, I realized Americans I was don't meter, know what a I said, so I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you. <laughs> I and know the, what uh, the engine nozzles are about to disappear under the surface of the OLM. Again, we have all that scaffolding there because there's been so much work going on on the orbital launch mount here. A lot of refurb and upgrades, and there's still going to be some work going on for sure over the next few days and weeks. The year is 2028, and work on the orbital launch mount continues. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Was that by that point? Actually, R2, do you want to hear a funny story? At my at my wedding, right? The um, Brimo has family in Canada, right? Across the um, across the river, uh, in Windsor and stuff. Uh, so they're from they're from Ontario, right? And they. Uh, I was talking about my garage. They they started asking me about the garage. They're like, dude, you have a, we heard you had a really awesome garage and you work on your trucks in there. And they're like, how big is it? And I thought about it for a second and I gave them the specs and metric and they kind of just blinked and looked at me and they said, oh, that's cool. They're like, how the hell, how does he know that? I'm like, I'm a nerd, man. You're from Ontario, just saying. <laughs> There you go, man. There you. Well, there you go, bud. If 
we get to 6,000 likes on this live, I was like, the like I was like, oh, it's 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 nice. It's a uh, what is it? It's I think that's fair. I, I like this. It's like 10. I think I said 10 by 12. 10 by 12 by 6, oh, and they were like, so whoa, how'd you know? I'm like, uh, all right, we have another super chat. Pepper what? <laughs> What's Elon's Mars flag look like, and when can we expect the Mars flag to fly? All right, so once again, they're going to move this so the alignment pin know, gets close. If you guys notice, the alignment pin is kind of tapered. See, even, even the receiving end, right? The, the receiving end is kind of tapered, and then there's the slot, so... The pin, the front of it looks like the tip of a pencil almost, right? And they'll extend it out, yeah, I know, and it, it'll locate itself on the hole and align the booster so they can attach the hold down points and the uh, umbilicals correctly. They'll move it into position and I don't know, I don't know if we're going to see the pin going forward, but maybe. American astronauts from American soil by an American company. Um, so, you know, there's going to be the American flag on the side of the ship and probably plant it on Mars as well. Uh, for those who know community, I think it's going to be the Greendale flag. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can see actually a great shot in this view here of uh, one of the connectors on the... Dan, you're coming by my way in a couple of weeks, flying to Dallas for three weeks, and there's a two-hour stop-off at Logan. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's cool, man. What's bringing you uh, across the pond, dude, if you don't mind me asking? That's cool. Going to Texas for a little while. You'd have some fun. Do the booster. So it looks like we're about a half meter or so, maybe a little bit more than a half meter um, from, or sorry, actually about a yeah, about a half meter <laughs> from uh, nice. touching down on the orbital launch mount. Again, this is he's invading. The very pre he's not invading, Kuro. I have a few friends in Dallas, and I'm long overdue for a vacation. You've never been here before closely inspecting all of this. Well, if you were here a little longer, dude, we could have could have hung out, but two hours, oh, trust me, Don't. if you have a two-hour layover, tracker. do not There's leave Logan Airport. Launch, um, You'll never get back in time. You guys are yeah, don't, don't do that. That's ah, a bad idea. I like that one. <laughs> These are all too right, good. For a, a pun token update, we're at 5.6 thousand They're inspecting the GSC the there so over on the right. That's, I see people want that's the cows. cover that holds the fuel lines oh, for gosh. the booster, the fuel and oxidizer lines. I mean, amongst other things, there's a bunch of stuff on here. Dude, if they actually open up the cover today and the umbilical pops out, it'll look, I, I'm telling you, it looks like a squiddy from the Matrix. Like, it, there's so many lines and there's pneumatic lines, there's gas or scavenging lines, which are also pneumatic lines, you moron. Sorry, I've been streaming for a long time today. Um, there's the oxidizer line, there's the, the fuel line, there's the oxygen vent lines, there's the methane scavenging lines, also another pneumatic system. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, if they get the hood open and that thing pops out, you, trust me, it looks ridiculous. Looks like the squiddies. Also pneumatic lines. <laughs> Let's just say there's... The, the inside of the box, there's things that move liquid and there's things that move gas. Done. There you go. Probably should have said it that way. Can you tell we've been live? So for a couple hours, I'll be smuggling tea into Boston. And I'll make sure that no one throws it in the harbor. I will find you. I will find you. I will. I will requisition your tea and throw it into a, the nearest body of water. Trust me, you're going to be surrounded by it. Imagine the RVAC, the stubby nozzle. Oh, 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 no. oh. oh. That that hurts my soul. Wow, okay, I think that takes the cake for the worst thing I've read all year. <laughs> yeah. Jack, I thought we were pros <laughs> in our cats. He said that it, Jack is in an NSF <laughs> fact channel going, going, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, let's continue with Starship for a bit here. Yeah, so back to what we're actually doing. Um, Hunter Lynch is asking, uh, it pretty why much is they not yeah. booster stabilization pins on the OLM? Do either of you know the reason for that yeah dan you're about to that's because there are none you're about to feel a heat that you've never felt before you think 30 c is hot in texas it gets to 50 routinely yeah ha, ha, yeah yeah drink drink a lot of water trust me on this one 
Drink a lot of water. The vehicle lifts off. You can't have those stabilizer arms lifting it's off. It's 30C at that night would, that in Texas. Work. Yeah, that's right. So I think they in have... Dallas, you know, yeah. They need to have clearance built in there. So I think that's why they really don't need them here. Uh, the uh, stabilization from the chopsticks themselves is enough to get it aligned. Yep, and then you have the pins yeah. on the OLM, very similar to the ones on the uh, transport stand. You survived 40 in Australia. Basically secured in place. Mm. Okay. Very, very cool. Um, let's see, we have from Millennium saying it's pronounced aluminum. Um, I probably mispronounced I'm typing one of those this in the back channel. after hearing Al aluminum U versus aluminum all day. Men. But Thank you, Millennium. Um, <laughs> And then a super chat from Max Wait, saying... Can I kind of add something in here real quick? Sure. I had people come up to me out here, find me, and say, Hey, are you Jack? And I'm like, yeah. It's like, man, this dream is great. I can't believe how much they're talking about aluminum, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially because we're talking a lot about steel, mostly with Starship, and yeah, throw in a little... All because someone asked about aluminum chimes. Right, dead? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was how it started. Wow, that was way too long ago. That was about five hours ago, yeah. Yeah. Alex in the back channel. This is a steel. I mean, troll. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get when you dump cars, AC, industries, dumping heat in the environment. Texas was hot before we were there, before humans were there. It's just, it's just, hot. it's the desert, man. Like, well, at least the western half of it is. It's, it's the desert. It's hot. It's been getting hot in the desert for a lot longer than we've been around. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Thank you very much for the support. I know, but it just worsens tokens, it. Trust me. Yep. They will go to waste, which is the whole point of a pun. So, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> oh my gosh, wow. Uh, August is the least humid time in Texas. The sun, yeah, the sun evaporates it all. Then, yeah, it just... And I guess if you get another 200, then it would be up to 54. Deserts are known for being odd. It's kind of their thing. Um, 9.44 p.m. Foo Face and it's 34 C in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks, dude. Wait. Oh. Yeah. It's 50 bucks. Oh, I guess now it's had one more since I just used one. But yeah. Math is hard. Um. Anyway. Um. Don't forget that we will be following oh, everything. How dare on you? With, uh, Starship, not just puns, but everything going on with Starship. And for any of these major events, lifts, I know, is it climate uh, change denial? Just fires, stating that deserts are hot. Wait, what, equipment. me? We will do dedicated live streams right no, here. No, that, so no, sure that's real. No, that's real. No, that happens. You, you don't add 7 billion people to this planet and think the climate's going to change and stay the same. That's... And of course, we also have our Anybody who thinks that is... You know, of, uh, Space Coast, got a couple of screws Base loose. So, I think uh, for a free sub, you get a lot out of it. 99 right now, James? Nice, nice. Subway, sub. no offense. <laughs> um, it's only 17 in Denver right now. Uh, frog is Frog is asking, where are the COPV, um, the, right, the COPVs store gas on the Starship? Uh, where are the COPVs located? And thank you for all you guys do. Thank you for the support. It means a lot. BH Freak, no, no, hell no, 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 no. Oh no, that that that's real. Yeah, no, it absolutely. Yeah, yeah so we're absolutely doing happy. something. Those are actually located like, inside the chines. That's why the yeah, chines oh, exist. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be um, kind of stupid to not think that. Of that's right. inside those chines and SpaceX engineers. I think the question, the right question to ask is, how much are we screwing it up? around there to act as like. Yeah, Small that's wings. that's the real question know. now, isn't it? <laughs> I have no idea what they are, it's 14 it's like C in Liverpool right, right now. We did also see them flash the lights a times on the drone. There. A little cooler than it is here. Let me go check the temperature outside. I'll be right. I'll be right back. Interesting. Is that Morse code? It's 11 C outside, and you're melting at 11 C, bro. That is true, bro. I doubted that, but uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, interesting. The noises and the visuals we're getting at the moment. That's likely, uh, I would think. Pins starting to align or move. Yeah. I mean, it looks like the booster has been stationary for a few minutes. It's doing AB check. It's 85 degrees in the garage, so 30 C. AB is literally rewinding the stream about two minutes and then going back to real time to see the. I don't think that's the temperature yeah, outside. I think the temperature outside is a little cooler than that. 
Inside of my garage, troll. Yeah, the garage holds heat really, really well because it's insulated, but it's not air conditioned, so it get, it's still super hot in there. Align pins and start alignment checks and all that. Shout out to the drone operator for another flash. Let's see. By the way. What other methods behind besides COPV for pressurization of a rocket? T-Man, are you asking me what other methods of composite overwrap pressure vessels are used for pressurization? That's like asking, what else does a gas tank do on a car? Well, it, it, holds, it holds gas in it. I, I, I don't really understand what you're asking. We're just now almost at nine. Okay. Yeah, we're close to nine at this point. Uh, then a super chat from Lenny Jean saying, Alimonium. With a lemon emoji. That a lemonum. A lemonum. <laughs> very, very nice. Yeah. Wow, we've had too much of this conversation today. My brain is hurting from it. I feel like every eighth of this stream has just been talking about aluminum or aluminium. Yeah, methods behind COPVs. Yeah, um, yeah there's not. More... I mean. Composite overwrap pressure vessels are kind of industry standard for any type of pneumatic system that you have inside of a rocket. Like, I don't... If there's other ways so, Spartan, I don't know what they are. Um, like I said, that's... Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Static fire, RJ? Uh, no, they, they're just... They're putting... They're putting Booster 9 here on the uh, on the pad. They lifted it up so there. Here. We had some really nice pictures. I'll show you. Do you think the flight will be, and then we'll go to Jack, and then Sawyer, and then nice. How's that for a stuff? picture? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but while we have this view, we have a super chat from... Autogenous pressurization is one. Um, yeah, but, but... But there are other methods for pressurization deadbringer like yeah i suppose there's ap right like i mean that's i guess that's it yeah i, I don't think there's much more what do you think sawyer i think i mean but you see you still need something started just because i mean like starship not something to start it that's not the right way sorry i'm getting tired dudes um you still <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, even with autogenous pressurization, just because there's not autogenous pre just because there's autogenous pressurization on on Starship doesn't mean there isn't COPVs. There are COPVs in the chines right here. Ian was talking about them a second ago. So, like, that's why I'm getting confused because COPVs for pressurization could mean many different things on a rocket. In this case, the pressure vessels on the pressure vessels that are inside of these nacelle things kind of on the side, they're called chines, I guess. The pressure vessels that are in there are holding nitrogen, and the nitrogens are the nitrogen is used to spin start the raptors to restart them in flight. It's a pneumatic system to get the um, the turbine machinery on raptors spinning. Think about if you take like compressed air and a computer fan and <laughs> literally that. But like I, I that's what that's why that question, like I'm not hundred percent sure what the basis of that question is. Like are, what what other methods are used? What what other methods besides COPVs are used for pressurization? What are you pressurizing? What there's a bunch of different systems that pressurize on a rocket, not just the fuel tanks. Can't believe SpaceX copied Neptune. Yeah, I know, right? I also could just be misunderstanding the question because I'm tired. <laughs> it also could be that. Um. Then another super chat from Pepper Jack Shack. Um, Given gift membership, thank you. Thank you for thank you for members of your means of life. Thank you for your support. Hopefully you enjoy your gifted membership. You didn't used to live in a desert right now. The desert of fine gas swaths of the world at this point. I love the channel you are all awesome. One question. Do you notice the flight termination system? It looks like it's 
Spartan, it doesn't happen that fast, dude. You know, like, the climate of, the climate is not going to change in a year. You know what I mean? It's not going to do that. It's, it's a slow process. Boiling pot of water. Like, did it rain for you? Oh yeah, we got a lot of rain over the last weekend. Would turbines create some form of force that could be harvested in space? Turbines. Sella, what do you mean? Like, there's nothing up there to use to, to get a turbine to get a turbine to spin. There's solar ionic radiation. Um, I mean, I suppose if we somehow found a jet engine to be able to ingest radiation and use that as some kind of reaction mass, maybe. But that's getting a little bit. Sorry, there's a bug. Uh, that's getting a little bit out of my purview. You know what I mean? It's been changing since the Industrial Revolution. It's recorded in the ice cores. Nutball, you, you, you know the planet was warming up before the Industrial Revolution, right? Like, I'm just just making sure we're on the same page. Like, I'm not trying to be a jerk. You, you understand that there's a natural cooling process to Earth, right? And I, I, I understand that it's ex being exacerbated by us. It absolutely is. But it's not just like, oh, the planet was just good, and then the Industrial Revolution happened, and now we're just warming. It was We were already warming, but we're exacerbating it. We're making it worse. It's the compounding effect that everybody's worried about. You're just talking about CO2 levels. Yeah, that box in the top middle is... Oh. Thank you for the correction there. Yes, that is the raceway to connect... Actually, CO2 levels on a... If you, if you look at the fossil record, CO2 levels are way... They're probably the lowest they've ever been. They've just started going back up because of us. Carbon levels... Carbon levels during the... Um, Jurassic and Triassic periods were way higher than they are now, like three or four times higher, like PPM. They, they, they know, they know, paleontologists and geologists know that from radiocarbon dating. You know what I'm saying? The planet, dude, there's been carbon in the atmosphere before. But see, what everybody's worried about is that the planet naturally took all that carbon that was in the atmosphere and put it in the ground. And we're undoing that. So, might be fine. Might not be fine. Probably don't want to roll the dice with that, considering we don't have any other planets that we've colonized. It's probably not a good idea. That's why we should go to space more, though. Am I right, or am I right? Yep, that's why redwoods exist. Bingo. It's not the CO2 you need to worry about, it's the methane. Um, sure. He just applies most of that three low tone. But... Hey, I'm a little gaseous, all right? Jeez. You don't need to tell everybody, Dan. But humans couldn't sustain life in the Jurassic world. Exactly so, Spartan. Bingo. That's a good point. Yeah, we would not be able to flourish the way we flourish right now with CO2 levels that high. So plant more plants, homie. The exact principle behind that is kind of I, please, please, for the love of God, that was a joke. I know it's not that easy. Don't get bent out of shape. Please, if you're watching this and going, ah, oh, no, 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 I'm kidding. But seriously, though, plant more plants. That's probably a good thing. Every little bit helps. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The biggest issue is that we probably won't be fine. We can't adapt to, to the spicy like that. Uh, see, super. I disagree with that. I think we'll figure it out. I think we're way smarter than that. When it comes to survival, we're pretty damn good at it. Now, do I think it should get to that point? Probably not. We probably shouldn't get to that point. But if it does come to that, I think we'll be all right. Our living, uh, our, our living conditions might change a little bit. change a little bit, but yeah, I, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, there you go, so Spartan, my guy. 
mid 67 no 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 but talk to the owner it's an ss 427 fully built frame up resto about 15 years ago cage interior big slips and then sticker shock hit me the guy's asking 75k i would literally rather buy a nova buy a junk nova element spend 50 grand on it and build that exact same car for 25 grand less Yeah, like I said, Goose, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. It, it's going to be an uphill battle, but I think it'd be all right. We should probably go to space and like colonize the moon or something so we don't have to worry about screwing this planet up as much. It's a good idea. Hey, Chris. Yeah, I'm, having, I'm doing just fine, man. How are you? What the heck would you want an old Voxel Nova for? I don't. I, that's why I don't have one. I was fainted when I heard the price. I wonder what would happen if the dinosaurs didn't go extinct. Would we have to contain the dinosaurs in certain ways? Um, no. T-Man, extinction events are pretty routine for Earth over the course of its existence. There's been six of them. Kind of overdue for one, by the way. Sorry, I don't mean to get anybody give give anybody an existential crisis, but um, if we had to, team, and I will say I've seen Jurassic Park. It, it won't end well. Exactly what Kelly said, team, and is is correct. Yeah, if the the dinosaurs going extinct basically opened up the door for humans to flourish. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like the dinosaurs died and then a human popped out of a hole next day. The next day after Chicklexabub hit the earth and went, Hey, they're gone. All right, cool. That's not how that works. <laughs> Much longer time period. If you haven't followed Jack on Twitter, you absolutely, first off, you're missing out. But second off, you need to correct that and follow Jack on Twitter. Because oh, he's been down in Boca Chica for a, f a few weeks now. He had a little break there about a week and a half ago. Uh, but he's been down there for a while taking some amazing photographs, amazing yeah, videos right, that go yeah, up yeah, on the yeah. channel. Hey, just try uh, to so keep it classy. Definitely be sure to give him a follow could, yeah, and stay up, to two, uh, stay up to date would be cool. all the pictures he's Flying would be really neat. He's an excellent photographer. Well, the detail, the background lighting, just perfect. Yes. Uh, um, we have a super chat from Billy Day. Been watching space flight since late Mercury and enjoying it more than ever. That was a long time ago, and I'm glad you're still it's interested good, in so supporting us. Thank you it, very dude. much. No problem. Yeah, it's 1961. But I curse today on stream too. I take my timeouts just like anybody else flight, does. I, so I stop and stare at the Alan camera Shepard awkwardly for about five seconds when I say shit. Yeah, it was pretty sophisticated, note. Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> See? The roads behind and looking toward the horizons see? ahead. Yeah, see, chat, God speeds mad. all of those who sail among the stars and bacon bars. Don't forget the space bacon. It's all good, dude. Don't so worry about it. So thank you for your support. Wow, um, that is a $50 tip. Thank yeah, you very much. Holla, holla, get pounds. That means it's so much. Spaceflight.com. So yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, what an awesome day that 54 years ago, humanity yeah. was on another, like, gravitational body influence like wow. I was saying this earlier in the stream and I think it's still poignant the oh, fact is that, that one band going blue? as we are on that 54th anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing here we are looking at a vehicle being lifted and set on the launch pad and remember mm -hmm. this is the vehicle that will launch the lander the next lander that will land on the moon. How long to launch? We haven't done it it's going to be a couple of months, Zachary. We were just watching this thing sad, get hoisted up onto the pad. This booster, or not this particular booster, but this launch system, Starship, will get humanity back to the moon. So it's quite fitting that this is going on tonight. And thank you again for the impressive support. Not only, yeah. Well, also, if you look towards the center bottom of the screen, 
you see Starship's future target, the moon, right there in frame. It's kind of a little moon. blown out right now, moon. but it's setting. Moon. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and also another thing, I mean, as a Saturn V fanboy myself, I'll, I will admit it, um, it's crazy to see that this is the first and only vehicle to surpass the Saturn V in payload capacity to orbit. And as sad as it is for it to lose that record, it's been a long time coming, and I'm glad that we are finally here, especially, you know, to have something like this, you know, the next vehicle lifted on the pad on the eve of Apollo, or on the anniversary of Apollo 11's landing it is just incredible. And so I'm so glad to see us finally moving forward again, back out beyond low Earth orbit. The amount of people that are out here that are excited about Starship, it makes me so happy because I just think about back in the Apollo era, how much of a thing that was. And then of course I think about the tail end in the shuttle era, which don't get me wrong, shuttle good. Chris B, please don't fire me. But <laughs> public public interest really did wait uh, for a variety of reasons. Yeah, the shuttle ball, necessarily. Just, just to see sort of a resurgence of people caring, seeing people bring their families out to look at this moment in time is, is fleeting. Let's be real. Like, let's really consider the fact that this is this very special and unique moment in time. And just, I'll shut up now, but thank you so much to everybody. I mean, thank you guys for, for holding down the stream. Thank you to all our members for helping yeah. us do this. And, our and, members are and, truly amazing. This is like a crowd. I mean, I don't like the, really the term crowdfunding, but really, we are a news organization, and the way that we pay the bills is thanks to our members and YouTube and whatnot. And it's just, it's really humbling. It's really awesome. Thank you, everybody, for the support, even if it's not monetary. It's just we're the luckiest people to get to do this, and it's just so fun to help get others excited about what's happening because they didn't know. About That's it. how you know it's from the heart, Chris. It's, yeah, it's and speaking, speaking. Diverse. All right, fellas, the boosters, the boosters in position. They're probably not going to do much more tonight. It's eleven o'clock. The last time humans landed on the moon was July thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. Okay, all right, that's enough internet for the day. Um, yep, I, yep, I, uh, yep, that that's enough internet for for now. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna play Derail Valley tomorrow. Okay. We'll get back to working on some trains. Uh, yep. <laughs> that, that's, an, that's enough internet for today. We put it in 11 and a half hours. We're, we're, we're good. We're good. Let's see. Let's raid Middle Ditch. He's playing Slapshot Rebound right now. So let's go see what Thomas is up to. Go give him a raid. Go over there, say hi for me, dudes, if you could. Uh, he's playing Slapshot Rebound. Not sure exactly what that is, but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna go send him a raid. Go over there, say EJ raid, post some panels up there, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow uh, at noon time. Uh, we'll we'll jump right into derail, and maybe we'll do some space news, talk about the booster lift today. Go see what he's up to, dudes. And uh, thank you very, there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.